MakerBot has just released their latest generation of 3D printers and declared that they're no longer targeting home users and instead moving to the business and education space. Let's talk about that. Welcome back to Makers Muse, guys. My name is Angus, and today we're looking at the latest press release from MakerBot. So basically, MakerBot have been around for a very long time. If you know anything about 3D printers, at least in the small scale, then you'll know about MakerBot. They're often described as sort of the creators of desktop 3D printers, even though they're not. And by far the name is the most popular out of all 3D printer manufacturers around the world. But things haven't exactly been going smoothly for MakerBot as a company for quite a few years now. And it started with the acquisition by Stratasys and the creation of the MakerBot Replicator 5th generation. So for those who don't know, I used to actually use a 5th gen MakerBot. It was one of the first ones off the production line and it, it had huge amounts of issues. They had tons of problems and it turned out a few years later that they knew about them all along and it was all to do with the extruded design. Anyway, I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about this latest press release and latest product line coming out of MakerBot, the Replicator Plus and the, the Replicator Mini Plus. Let's have a look. So this is the new lineup from MakerBot. We've got three machines. One is the Z18. I don't know if they've done anything to that. I can't really see anything yet in their press release on it. But the main two focus machines are the MakerBot Replicator Mini Plus and the Replicator Plus, which are both upgraded versions of their previous Replicator 5th Gen line. So basically in this latest press release, they've announced that they're no longer targeting home 3D printer users and a few articles have taken this to the next level, specifically Gizmodo. That article is probably the one to have a look at. And here's the article on Gizmodo. Home 3D printing just not there yet admits MakerBot. Righto. So let's have a look into it and let's cut through, uh, cut through the jargon and get straight to the facts. So it's got a little bit of a backstory on what MakerBot was trying to do, trying to bring 3D printing to the home, blah, blah, blah. And now they're saying they're going in an overall repositioning of the brand to target education. So for those that don't know, MakerBot's been doing really badly recently. They've done multiple lines of uh, layoffs. They've gone through three CEOs. Uh, Bri Bree Peters quit quite a long time ago. And they've got uh, a new CEO now as well. It all kind of started with the fifth gen lineup. Things all started going downhill. The MakerBot 2X, Replicator 2X, is a fantastic machine and still there's clones on the market of that machine which are going strong. But it was a shift from that kind of, I guess, DIY aesthetic to a product when things started going wrong, which kind of hints at what I'm gonna to get to next. 3D printing went through a marketing hype. It exploded, people thought it could do the world, and then they quickly realized that it couldn't. On Makers Muse, I'm always about practical applications of 3D printing, and yeah, there's a lot of things that 3D printing can do, but there's certainly a lot of things that it can't do. But the article does have a little bit of misinformation here, and one that I want to pick up on is this saying that 3D printing is being brought down by extremely low quality print materials. I would completely contest that. In my opinion, the desktop 3D printing market has actually exploded in terms of materials that you can print with and the quality of those materials. Before, it used to just be PLA and ABS. You printed with ABS if you could, you get a high strength part, but it was difficult to print with. Or you printed with PLA, which was easier, but your parts were brittle. That's no longer the case anymore. I did a video of PLA versus ABS that I definitely need to update now because we have now PETG, which offers sort of the best of both worlds. And we have modified materials, like modified PLAs that now resist higher temperatures, have higher strength. And we even have polycarbonate ABS mixers for extremely high strength parts. So that line is completely misinformation. And it kind of feeds into what they're saying about this desktop 3D printing market. And here it is saying a painfully long and difficult 3D printing process. Yes, 3D printing is slow. FDM as a process is definitely very slow but it depends how you look at it. Are you looking at 3D printing to make trinkets really quickly, or are you looking at to prototype things that could not have been made before? If it's the second one, then yeah, a 12 hour print actually doesn't sound that unrealistic if you're getting something that you couldn't get otherwise. And this feeds into my main point about all of this. 3D printing has no word art equivalent to it. What do I mean by that? Well, to 3D print something, you need design intent to really make it worthwhile. So if you own a 3D printer and you can't design and make what you want, all you're gonna be doing is printing stuff off the internet, which in my opinion completely defeats the purpose of owning a 3D printer. 
why would you own a 3D printer when you can only produce trinkets that you could probably just buy from the internet or a local supermarket? And that just feeds more into what they're saying here. I mean, they're saying, remember MakerBot's popularist Thingiverse? It's, it's Thingiverse. And they're saying it seems to be a thing of the past. Well, actually, yeah, Thingiverse has been kind of outdated for quite a while because it's full of crap and it's not curated properly and you can't find what you want because the search engine doesn't work properly. But to say that it's a thing of the past is kind of very much misinformation because let's go to My Mini Factory, which sort of took over the reins of what a STL repository for 3D printing should be. And you look in the fan art section of My Mini Factory and you look at the amazing products that people have uploaded for free that you can download and print. It's insane. So that doesn't make any sense to me. But let's give the MakerBot a fair chance. Let's have a look at the specs of the new 5th Gen Plus. So the build volume is pretty damn big. It's, you know, 295 centimeters at 295 millimeters, which is, you know, that big by, by not 195 by 665. I hate it when people list centimeters. It should be in millimeters. And so that's a fairly large build volume, a little bit larger than before. And it's, uh, you know, layer, layer resolution 100 microns. Again, that's a bit of misinformation, as I've said in previous videos. But the main point is this is a machine that's PLA only. It's saying that it's got a bed that will come factory leveled. Yeah, good luck with that. Courier's trash machines. And it's 2000 US dollars. And the thing is, this is very much, in my opinion, a larger corporation trying to work out what they're doing with their lower, lower cost SKUs. It's... It's very much missed the mark. There is so many other machines on the market at the moment that offer a better price, better bang for your buck. And to be honest, their new direction moving into the, the, the education space, it's kind of a little bit too late because yeah, this machine has a camera. It has a flex build plate, which uh, yeah, by the way, looks very much like um, flex 3D's build plate, but it's, you know, you look at the Cubicon Single or the Cubicon Style, and these machines have automatic leveling. They can print ABS, high quality. They have filters built in. It just seems like they're desperately trying to find a way out of their current situation, and I'm not sure it's going to work for them. So where does that leave us with this video? Well, I've rambled a little bit, which is kind of fair enough, but essentially the main point here is MakerBot saying that the, the desktop home consumer 3D printing market is dead. Well, in my opinion, it never existed. I feel that the hype built up this idea that 3D printing was this amazing technology to people who didn't really understand what the technology was capable of. And that's why I, I battled that for years as I was in, in the uh, commercial 3D printing space. But the fact is I describe 3D printers to people as if, you know, look at like an A3 size scanner, just a standard planar A3 scanner. They exist. But how many people, how many of you need an A3 size scanner? There is artists and photographers and people who work in businesses with large spreadsheets and builders who all use these tools on a daily basis to do their jobs. But personally, would I buy an A3 size scanner? No, it's, it's useless to me. I'll just use a scanner combo cheap inkjet printer that costs 30 bucks and A3 scanners are like a few hundred bucks. But the fact is that product exists for that niche. 3D printers, have a niche use. They are not for consumer use. They are not to be printing random stuff off the internet for no purpose. They are for people who see the potential in bringing their ideas to reality and using the 3D printer as a tool to realize that idea. So in conclusion to this video, I'm gonna start doing some more 101 videos, but instead of focusing on 3D printing, I'm gonna focus on 3D design and mesh manipulation. I've done a lot of high-end tutorials in the past, but I feel that I wanna make the actual 3D design process more accessible to you guys. So in doing that, what I hope to do is kind of throw it back into MakerBot's face and be like, okay, if you can educate people to design what they want, then they may actually want the tools and then they can take advantage of the low-end 3D printers that are currently on the market. So I'm gonna see how that goes. But essentially, this press release from MakerBot is just a drop in the water for me. I think lots of people in the community who have been here for a long time will not even pay attention to it. And now they've moved all their manufacturing offsite to China. They've lost even more control over their machines and their quality control because it's an American company manufacturing China. It's always a bit of a communication issue there. And I just, I, am, I have zero excitement for this machine, basically. And yeah, 
that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I hope hope some of this was useful to you and found it in interesting in terms of my opinion on just how the, the space of 3D printing is currently going at the moment. And if you want to see future 3D printing reviews, tri tips and tricks, and news on Makers Muse, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. And I don't, do, I don't do opinion pieces very often, but when I do, hopefully it helps some of you guys. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. He has placed satellites into water. He has actually blocked in space.